So from that time on, for example, we had during the 60s, we had created what we called an inner city organizing committee. And we wanted community control of the police and community control of schools. And our concepts of revolution were mainly in terms of control. Who is running things? They were not so much in terms of what values go into the institution. It wasn't until I saw what was happening in the rebellions that I began to, and understood also how what an important role had been played in the rebellions by young people who saw no future for themselves, who felt that the high tech was making them expendable, that I began thinking more about how the whole system of education had been based on the industrial age. But if the economy is falling apart, if the economy is changing so rapidly, what is the, what kind of school system do we need? And it was very clear, and John Dewey had recognized this very early, that the classroom being organized only for the economy was not creating citizens. And that there had to be a very different relationship between the community and the school. And it was out of that that I began to develop ideas of, the, of a paradigm shift in the educational system where being a part of the community and being a part of building the community would be a part of the curriculum from K to 12. We, they call that freedom schooling down south. But we need to do that same sort of thing with all our institutions. All our institutions had been created for another period that was now behind us. Well, m much of it, for example, during the Mississippi Freedom Summer in 1964, they created freedom schools, which in which the young people got a sense of themselves as part of the movement, in which there was not the divorce between the subjects that they studied and the society, which was in motion. And I think that's the sort of thing we have to begin doing.